Are you freaking out because your beloved LG G4 smartphone is boot looping, shutting on and off, or stuck in the LG Power Up logo? Did you forget to back up all your data, including contacts, pictures, videos, and text messages? Relax, keep calm, and take a deep breath. Cellular DR is here to help. We will walk you through the entire process and help you get your data out of your LG G4 smartphone. Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Human from CellularDR.com. Welcome to our channel and thank you for tuning in for another episode of the LG G4 Troubleshooting and Repair. In the previous LG G4 Repair video part 1, we showed you some examples of the boot loop issue and the phone locking up at the startup logo. Then in part 2, we showed you how to actually fix the problem by replacing the processor IC chip. Finally, in part 3, we showed you how to install additional heat sinks to keep the phone from overheating and getting the boot loop problem all over again. In this highly requested video, we're going to show you how to get your phone up and running long enough so that you can extract all your important data. As you can see here, this LG G4 is stuck in boot loop where it keeps shutting off and turning back on all by itself. Before I go any further, I want to give you a short background on this problem. The simple reason why the LG G4 phones boot loop or get stuck in the LG logo is that the processor chip overheats and over time the legs connecting them to the board get severed or weak. What we are doing here is reflowing the chip. Basically, we're heating up the chip and loosening some of the solder connections to help them make better contact. This is not a permanent fix by any means. If you're lucky, it'll work long enough for you to get your data out. We have seen instances where by doing this, people have resurrected their phones and then by putting additional heat sinks shown in the LG G4 Repair Series Video Part 3 linked above, they got their phone to start working again. But the purpose of this video is to show you how to get your data out of the phone. So I would recommend doing that first and then if you get lucky and it lasts, you have locked out and consider it a bonus. So we have gone ahead and disassembled the phone and removed the motherboard from the housing. We have also removed the factory heatsink cover located above the processor IC chip. We are using a professional JBC hot air rework station and have the temperature set at 430 degrees Celsius and airflow at 40%. With this unit, we're going to heat the chip in a circular motion for around 25 seconds. If you have a less powerful machine, then go ahead and adjust the timing accordingly. But beware that overheating it will cause significant damage and may not be reversible. This is a double stack processor IC chip, which means there are actually two IC chips mounted together and onto the board. The problem is usually on the top chip. So when you're heating the top chip, if you overheat and the solder balls underneath the bottom chip melt, then the phone will definitely not come back. The good news is that there's still another method of extracting the data directly from the EMMC chip, but that is very complicated and a little bit costly. So once you've refloat the large middle processor chip, go ahead and put the phone back together and power it on. Hopefully it will no longer boot loop and will get past the LG startup logo and boot up completely. So as you can see, the phone has started up and it's loading. The reason why you're seeing the percentage sign and the software loading, it's because this phone was previously master reset by the customer to try and get the phone working again. So now it is turning on and getting past the boot loop. It is going through the reset process to clear all the data and restore it to factory specs. Obviously, you wouldn't do this because you're trying to get your data out. So do not reset the phone. So I'm going to speed past this part of the video and show you that it does in fact power on. There are many different ways to back up the information on the phone, but the best solution really depends on how you want to restore the data. For example, do you just want to access the data? Do you have another Android device that you wish to load the data into? Do you want to import this information into an iPhone? Remember, there are many different options and different ways of extracting the data. So if you have a preferred software that you have downloaded or purchased, feel free to use it. Also, be sure to comment and share what software you're using and what phone you're transferring the data to so that others can also benefit from it. If we get enough requests on how to transfer the data to a specific type of phone or software, we'll be happy to do another video showing you step-by-step -step instructions. Now we're going to take the phone to the computer and show you how to perform the backup. 
So now we've taken the phone to the backup computer station and we're going to show you the easiest way to get a snapshot of all the data on the phone and back everything up. Here we're going to show you how to gain access to the hidden developer options menu and open up the phone's backend to allow access to the information on the phone directly from your computer. From the top of the phone, slide down the menu and click on the gear icon at the top right corner of the screen. All you're trying to do here is access the settings menu. So go ahead and go to the settings menu any way you're comfortable. Then under the general tab, scroll down and click on about phone. Scroll down again and click on software info. Finally, locate build number and click on it seven times or until you see the pop-up message in the green bar that says you're now a developer. Now click on the back arrow icon two times until you're back at the general tab again. Go ahead and click on Developer Options. You'll get a warning box that pops up. Go ahead and click OK to bypass it. Find and click on the USB debugging so that the box is checked. Once you've done this, go ahead and connect an original LG data cable to the phone, obviously making sure the other end is connected to a computer. Once you plug the cable into the phone, it will automatically start installing the drivers on your computer. If this is the first time you're connecting your phone to this computer, it may take a little while. Please do not interrupt the process and allow all the drivers to be loaded. Now here you see that one of the drivers failed and didn't install. If this happens to you, it means that you have to change one more thing for the phone to give access to the computer. So go back to the developer options menu by clicking USB debugging connected. Click OK on the warning box pop-up menu. Scroll down and select USB configuration and click on it. You'll get a pop-up screen with six different options. Click on MTP, Media Transfer Protocol, and now go back to the home screen by clicking the circle icon at the bottom of the screen. Now you will see the computer has found and is starting to install a device driver software. Once installed, a box will pop up on the phone. USB connection, asking you to allow the computer to access the phone data. Go ahead and click on Allow. Once it connects, you'll get a pop-up box on the computer. Go ahead and close the box. Now click on the Windows icon and go to Computer. You will see G4 Portable Device listed under Portable Devices. Go ahead and double click it. Now you see the folder that has all the information on your LG G4 phone. Go ahead and double click on it. You'll see a bunch of different folders. Make a new folder on your desktop and call it whatever you want. In my example, I'm going to call it the LG G4 Full Backup. Now click on the edit link and select all to grab all the folders at once. Then go ahead and drag them into the new folder that you made on your desktop. This will copy all the data from the phone and put them inside that folder. Now you have a full complete backup of everything on your phone. This has been part four of the LG G4 troubleshooting and repair series videos. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share this video with anyone you know that may be experiencing a similar problem with their phone. We value your comments and suggestions and would love to hear from you regarding your experience trying to follow this video and perform this backup. Your comments would also be very beneficial to others watching this video and thinking about trying this. So please take a minute and give us some feedback in the section below. Also, feel free to post any questions you may have and we will try to answer them as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching and don't forget to click on the subscribe button to be notified of more tips and tricks on how to keep your smartphone running efficiently.